to introduce you to some of the plants in the region. Um, this one's actually the state tree of Oklahoma for some reason, but um, its range is pretty much all of the mid to southern Appalachian range. This is redbud. Um, I couldn't really talk about the south of the red redbud blooming right now. It's um, kind of the equivalent to our cherry trees up here in terms of color and season, but it's not a cherry tree, it's actually a key family. It's strange to have a tree in family. There's a few of them though. Um, and the leaves, they're usually kind of more reddish when they're first coming out, and then they have this mostly green, and then they have the pink flowers. Uh, it's a very, very well loved tree. It was used medicinally, it's not talked about very much anymore at all. Um, it was used medicinally. I, what I like about this is if you look at what it was used for, this is how you interpret old folk medicine. They'll tell you what it's used for, they'll tell you symptoms. And then if you know your medicine, you can go from symptoms to probable use. And, and this was confirmed for me. So the symptom picture was vomiting, fever, and congestion. Vomiting, fever, and congestion can be a lot of things, but there is a, um, a typical thing that comes to mind when you have so much congestion that you are vomiting and it coincides with the fever, the most likely thing, at least if you think about the time frame that this herb would have been used, would be whooping cough. And indeed it was used primarily as the medicine for whooping cough. Um, so it was the bark, the little bark, was used for whooping cough. So I felt I had to at least mention that then. Is that true really aromatic? I, I didn't, I mean it has a smell and it's floral, um, but not super strong. I, when I, well, it is in Texas. Um, when I saw it, I expected it to be either floral uh, or stronger, or from a distance, I thought it was cherry. And, and then, on it, it's not either at all. <laughs> it's also small, um, usually somewhat smaller than the cherry trees. Thinner and, um, and then this, you'll find this all over. When I first came across one, it was just like this, but sideways, um, falling into the water. And you know, when you go to Appalachia, you're, you're sure that if you come across something like this, this is going to be deep in the woods. This is going to be, you're on the trail, and you're like, oh, there's a horse. What's this for? And most people that are visiting the area would think it was a um, still. It's a spring house. Yeah. Spring house. You're always going to find them next to a water source, although if you're in the wrong season, you might not know there's a water source there. This is uh, during the rainy season. And notice the water comes through the house, uh, and it was used as a little spring house to collect water. Um, most of them are, this is a nice one, but most of them are kind of falling over. There's some really nice ones that are still actually in use on um, uh, more wealthy lands, but this is what you typically find from along this line. Not stills, 